Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, it's Mike with Trayvon's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Jayco Evo 30.5 CKTS fifth wheel. You guys picked a beautiful unit here. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when you're parking, starting with your slide on your campsite as well as your awning. There'll be plenty of room for them to come in and out. Then on your off campsite, your other slides and then leave yourself a nice walking path because the next thing i want you to think about is where your power and water connections are going to be for the front of the unit on your driver's side of your tow vehicle is going to be your docking station and your power so park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite once you arrive we're going to unhook your hitch and here here's your lipper auto leveling system now arriving at the campsite we're going to unhook your hitch. Hitch man will go over this with you. But to turn this on, pull both arrows down. About three seconds, you'll get a green light. You'll simply lift the front or lower the front. Get your truck off. Once your truck's off, make sure that your front is higher than your back. And then hit retract all. Oh, excuse me. Then hit auto level. Auto level is going to run down all your auto leveling system. Yeah. Move the unit around a little bit. Once it's done, you'll hear it beep and this light will flash. Once that light's flashing, we're level. And we can go ahead and hook up our power and water. Big long 50 amp cord here. The way they go in now is they come in to the left, push it in, turn it to the right, put on your gray washer to lock that. Now at the end of that long 50 amp cord, should you need to plug into a campsite that has 30, there's a 50 to 30 dog bone, they call them. Comes to your convenience pack. And then there's also, if you need to plug in a home or any other 110, a 30 to 110 adapter you can throw on here. Just run ACs and appliances accordingly. We've been running off 110. You don't want to pop a bunch of breakers. All right, we've got our power hooked up. Let's hook up our water. Jayco makes it real easy. All your directions are right here in these five diagrams. So if we're hooking up at a campsite, we're hooking up to city water. Green to the left, blue to the right. City water connection, water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in the unit. Use this when putting fluid in here. Hook that up, hook up your hose. Be, a, be aligned to city water. But don't, took, don't turn on our hose yet. Let's go right here to the right to your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point, folks, this will lift right off here, is make sure our drain plug's back in. Throw some plumber's tape around that. Get that in there nice and snug. You may have left it out the last time you were camping. Once that's in there nice and tight, then you can go ahead and turn on your hose. Now, after your hose has been on for a little while, go inside. You can deploy your slides at this time because we're level and stable. I want you to go in and we'll open up all your water taps. Open them up until you got a nice steady flow of water going out of them, no more air, then shut them all off. Then you can go ahead and turn on your hot water heater from indoors. Now, if you're gonna go dry camping, you're gonna start by tank fill. Fill your tank, blue down, green to the left. Fill your tank here, same way, water pressure regulator. And the way to tell when that's full is go inside and hold down where you'll, there's a, uh, station where you can see your black, battery, gray, and fresh tanks. 
um, hold that fresh tank button down once that's full remove that hose and then you can turn on the water pump now you can turn on the water pump here just remember if you turn on the water pump here turn it off here if you want if you turn the water pump on indoors turn it off indoors uh, once you have that full tank you switch now once it shows that tank is full go ahead and unhook your hose then you're gonna switch from tank fill to dry camp green down blue to the right then you'll turn on your water pump when you want want to get water out of that tank you can turn it on here or you can turn it on indoors just remember wherever you turn it on that's where you want to turn it off at all right winterizing we'll suck the uh, uh, antifreeze fluid in just make sure you bypass your hot water heater and same thing as sanitizing that'll suck soapy water in that'll wash out your tanks again make sure you bypass your water heater all right well hooked up with power and water let's go ahead and walk you around the rest of the outside of the unit starting in this docking station you do have a night light should you arrive at night there's where you can plug in solar at that'll trickle charge your solar batteries hot and cold shower that this blue spray port will plug into again your hot water bypass your black tank flush we'll talk about that when leaving the campsite your water pump cable and satellite connections this is the side you'll sanitize the winterize in this is the side you'll fill up your tanks or uh city water at black and gray tanks this little area here you can run all the hoses down through so you can keep this compartment door closed Coming over here underneath your auto leveling system is your battery disconnect. This will disconnect all the battery power to the unit. It will come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. Speaking of propane, continuing on this campsite, one of your propanes, turn that to the left to open. Here's your regulator, turn it over to this tank and now you see it's green, that means you got gas. Continuing down this side, next to your docking station is a flue for your furnace two things do not block this opening and if you're running your furnace steer clear it will get hot a couple more things on your hot water heater there is an on off electric element down here the only time you ever want to turn that on is if you're hooked up to 110 up here if your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working come out here and look and see if these are bubbled up if they are press them back in those are uh, reset valves and then your pressure release valve underneath on this side where you dump a our tanks is also our uh, low point drain access to the back of your fridge here a vent for your microwave tending down this side we got your ladder utilize it go up there a couple times a year and caulk as needed looks like you have your uh, backup camera on here accessory hitch come around your slide on this side your other fresh tank low point drains on this side is a big white handle you'll pull easier to see when your slides close and we're leaving your campsite here you got a couple of outdoor speakers another spot for that boost spray port a light for night so you can see your steps well another side of your pass-through storage I believe you'll see another one of these indoors Ferion sells a bluetooth uh, wireless pre-wired speaker for this this will charge it 110 and cable if you want to set a TV out here your backup camera stuff again another spot to run hoses down through you so you can keep your compartment closed your other propane your hydraulics for your auto leveling system and lastly in the front your battery check your battery post now and then make sure these haven't wiggled loose bouncing down the road and your spare tire has a manual crank over here to bring that down that about covers everything on the outside i did want to mention that there is also a 110 up here your side cameras let's go take a look inside to come inside the unit first thing i like to point out to everyone is where the fire extinguisher is located make sure that you and everyone is camped with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency Coming in immediately, right up the wall here, we'll start at the top. This is where you're pre-wired for solar. Leave this template on here, that'll show the text 
uh, all the wiring if you ever decide to have this completely wired for solar down below our J command is our, a lot of our lighting this is a temperature reader you'll see a few of those throughout the unit that uh, allows the thermostat to work better down on the floor here is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector and the reason I mentioned that's 12 volts always running off your battery so if you're boondocking dry camping somewhere nothing plugged in charging your battery use that battery disconnect if you're gonna be gone for the day to keep this running your battery down one more thing over here to the right is your access panel to breaker box and fuses coming back up to our J command so there's a BM Pro app that you can uh, put on your phone it will run everything on here you can stand outside with your phone and run your awnings and your slides in and out start down here with your lighting number one is all interior number two is exterior number three will do both this is another spot you can turn on your water pump and if you hit that that'll bring you directly to your furnace where it says temperature so I'm gonna go ahead to the top here this will run us through everything so settings tanks water motors and AC AC second so starting at settings here's where you can pair your device just hit OK there and that'll pair your phone to this you can go down through these Here's where you see the levels of your tanks. Here's where you can turn on your water pump at another spot. Here's where you turn on your water heater if, if hooked to gas or electric. So just hit select and that'll bring you down to the next one. And then hit on if you're hooked up to electric. Hit select to go to gas and hit on if you're hooked to gas. Next one will be awning and your slides. We'll start with your awning. So I got your awning ran just about all the way out. I'm gonna hit extend on that. You only wanna run that awning out until you can see that black bar and that white flap has fallen down to 90 degrees. That will extend itself past that and run itself up backwards. They all do, no one's designed one to stop at that point yet. So watch it as you run it out, only run it out as far as you need to. Runs out and in at a decent speed, so it should be easy to stop for you. back in we will continue our tour coming back up in here we can select down to our slides we'll do that when leaving the campsite now here we can turn on our AC mode we turn to cool on high you can hear that running regular cool or off here that shut off if I check if I go to heat you hear the furnace kick on oh it's set to 63 let's go up here change this it's already 75 in here but to get the kick on we'll crank that up to 79 there's your furnace kicking on you can hear that down at the bottom of your steps now you'll notice when I shut the furnace off Oops, get back to off. It takes a few minutes for the furnace to cycle through for the fan to shut off. There's your second AC, and we're back to the beginning. Continuing into our unit. On your island here, you do have a 110 with GFCI reset. Your Dometic fridge. There's another one of those uh, Bluetooth speaker holders. Dometic fridge will open up the freezer up top here. Turn it on to the left. Here we go, we're on over here. Now we're going to turn this to auto. Turn it back on. Turn this to auto. When the light's on auto, auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're on gas. Change that to LP. And here's your temperature, 1 through 5 being the coldest. Shut that off. Coming over to your self-explanatory microwave that does have a high. And low vent and a light 
high and low. We'll go back to high here. Show you your glass top here makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light. Turn this to light, should turn to red. When it does, hit your spark and there's your flame. Same thing on the oven. Turn this to light, hit your spark, that'll light it. Then go ahead and just turn it to the desired temperature. No pilot light on these. They just light up here. And if you rock this panel light down, it becomes an oven light. A lot of individual lighting here. Come over to your television here real quick. Turn that on. There's your TV working. Let's go up here to your sound system. Very on AM, FM, Bluetooth, DVD, CD player. Very cool sound system. So three zones. We can shut it off in here. Just have it outdoors. Or all three. We'll get loud. More information about it there. Fireplace. Remotes for both of these as well. Uh, I can go through and show you all the pretty colors, folks. But the biggest thing now on these is the heat. Crank that heat up to high. If it's chilly in the morning or evening, instead of using your gas, use their electricity if you're at a campsite to warm it up in here. This will get it toasty in here in no time. Next to your sofa, you do have uh, 110 and USB ports. Turn your sofa into a bed real quick. Your back cushions removed, they're just Velcroed on. Find it best to stand in the middle. Gives you good leverage here, because what you want to do is lift this up and open these legs up. You pull the whole thing towards you. And flip the back down. Just that quickly. You have another sleeping quarters. Reverse the process, make sure you put the back up first. Lift this up and fold your legs in. Jack down. Just that quickly, we are back to the sofa. More USB here. Lighting for up here is here. Lighting here. You have the what we like to call parachute pull recliners. Pull on this parachute pull. Chairs recline. You'd have to push them back down with your legs. Cup holder and remote spot. The chairs. These covers are for travel so they don't bang against each other. This does have storage on hydraulic and pull this top out for an extension. Storage under here as well. Continuing up the hallway. A couple things to mention in the bathroom. Shower door. Make sure that this is snapped closed for travel. You do have a power exhaust vent here. Lighting. Come back into your wardrobe. Biggest thing back here is I want to make sure you don't ever store anything here. You may forget it's there and close your slides and hurt something. Storage under your bed, there are two folding chairs that match your dining room chairs and if you want to pull that bench out of there. The spare tire manual crank is underneath there as well. Another temperature reader. Prep for a TV, there's a backer here. Uh, cable, 12 volt, 110 cable, however you want to hook up back here. You have lighting up next to the bed as well. Tons of accent lighting, USBs, 110s on both sides as well. Well, that about covers everything in here. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite. One other door to make sure you're secure for travel is this bathroom door. Make sure you snap it open. So what I like to do is come to my control panel, touch number one, and shut off all the interior lights. That'll show me any individual lights I need to shut off. I know as I came out up there, everything was done. Turn number one back on. Doors and drawers. Make sure all doors and drawers are closed, especially these. 
um, recliner back. Nothing's going to impede your slides from coming in. Strap your chairs down. I don't know if you saw the safety straps underneath there. In the bedroom again, wardrobe slide, make sure that's secure and out of the way. You do have a, this bathroom door as well to snap back. So both those are back. Doors are secure. Drawers are secure. Come back up here. Let's go find motors. Select slide number one. Retract. That's going to be our bedroom slide. You can watch that from here. The lights are on off from number one in here. Once that's in, select slide number two, hit retract. See the importance of having those drawers down there closed? You may even when you arrive, make sure that they haven't bounced open if you're traveling far before you open your slides. Slide number three, retract. That noise is okay to hear. That's the slide mechanism telling itself not to go in any further. Hit number one, make sure all our chair is off. Just look out, make sure we have shut off our exterior, which we haven't. So just hit number two, that'll shut off all those. Exit the unit. Now the biggest thing on these stairs is to make sure that this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise this could catch on it. They lift real easy. Adjustable feet, just push in on this and pull this up and down however you need. Just set it up inside. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door. Lift and turn your handle, and that's ready for travel. At this point, unhook our power, our cable, and our water. We can come back over here. Turn on our auto leveling system, and we will simply hit retract all. That's going to bring up all of our stabilizing jacks. Come around to this low point drain. Dump those. If we are at a campsite, and if we are out dry docking, our low point drain for that, easier access now that the slides in. Maybe right there, pull that handle. Hook up our hitch and head on up to the dump station. We do have one last water to drain, excuse me. Come to our hot water heater. After all those low point drains are done, lift up on this pressure release valve. That's gonna let the last, last of the hot water out of there. Make sure this is snapped back down so your door can go back on. And then you can pull your drain plug. Now, heading up to the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump's gonna be just ahead of your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. To arrive, take your 10 foot hose, comes to your convenience pack, hook that up right here, open this up, and pull our black tank. Now, once it sounds like it's no longer draining or someone's inside watching it on the uh, control panel board, once it looks empty, leave that black handle open again with your water pressure regulator, hook up the hose at the dump station, and put it in here for a good five minutes. That tank flush is going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, shut the hose off, close that up, close your black handle. Then pull one gray handle at a time. This gray handle, till it's empty, push it back in. Pull this gray handle till it's empty, push it back in. Now there's gonna be cleaner waters, your sinks and your showers. That'll clean your sewage hose out for you a little bit. And you can store it in a nice sanitary place and head on home. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this Eagle for many years to come. Happy camping.